Proverbs chapter 21. The president's heart is in the hand of the Lord, and as the rivers of water, he turns it whatsoever be will. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord, and as the rivers of water, he turns it whithersoever he will. Now, the leader of a country, the king's heart, is in the hand of the Lord. It's in the Lord's control. I don't care if you vote or not. I don't care if you don't vote. God will put the voting to who he wants in office. The Bible says God will set up kings and he'll bring down kings. And what a king does. Don't you think God, with all his power and excellency, could have stopped Israel from being under the pharaoh of, of rigor service? Do you think God could have stopped uh, Nebuchadnezzar putting those three boys into the, into the fiery furnace? Do you think God could have stopped the Herod of killing all the babies when he was about two years old? Those all happen for a reason. Because of sin. Because of the power of Satan. Satan told Jesus, listen, I'll give you all this power. And Jesus did not rebuke him. But God has his will and his plans designed. America has the present that she has today because that is what today is. I didn't name no names because maybe this will be, be heard 10 years from now. You will get the leader that, the, that represents the nation at that time. You're not going to get a revival Christian president in the White House because that's not what the churches are. Visit any 10, 20 churches in your neighborhood and you'll find out why. As the rivers of water, an illustration, he, God, turneth it whithersoever he, God, will. Daniel 5, 17 to 31, with a free will. But again, with foreknowledge, God already knows in a whole nother study. You may not like taxation. You may not like going to war. You may not like what's happened to your country. But God has put that man or that woman into office, and the heart is guided by God. If, if Pilate weren't sold Jesus, Herod would have been too happy to. You know, Pilate had an opportunity to be saved and deny his office and give it to Jesus. By the way, Nebuchadnezzar gave God the glory, and that's the last time you ever heard of him. Every way of man, religion, and science, and his doings, is right in his own eyes. He thinks what he's doing is right. He thinks the Bible preaching thumper guy is a fool. He knows better. All right, so with that. But the Lord, the Lord, pondereth, considers the heart. And we see two heart issue, issues here. We see the ruler of a nation, and we see man in general. God will guide the heart of a ruler, a king, and yet you think what you're doing is so right and God one day will say, all right, I'll consider what you're doing one day. God will balance religion and science one day at the great white throne judgment. All right, so you think your religion, okay. Now, what was your religion all about my son? Why was he still nailed to the cross in your church house? 
Why wasn't he God in your church house? Why did you say he went to North America in your church house? Why was he even Jesus mentioned in your church house? Why did you raise a name above all names whereby man it was given for man to be saved? You see what I mean? You know, there may be somewhere today, right now, 2014, in a jungle somewhere that may have never, ever heard of any civilization, never seen even a picture of Jesus, doesn't he know what Jesus is. And no missionary may get to him. Maybe there is. And there may be one person, if not two or three people, not maybe a tribe of people of that civilization, that they're doing what their heart is telling them to worship the true God. Maybe without a Bible, without the, the, uh, a missionary coming and telling them about the, the way, the truth, and the life. And God's going to weigh those things and ponder up the heart to say, you know what? You did not have the gospel to you. You did not have the, you know, what about the heathen I'm talking about? And you match that with Romans chapter 1. You looked up those guys and you worship the creator. You didn't worship the, you know, the Aquiles and, and uh, uh, Orion and all that. You worship them stars as a creation of a creator. And everything you did, you did for that creator. Listen, even the, the Native Americans in a... Uh, uh, here in America before long before Columbus and the Europeans came over here when they brought down a deer they would bow their their knee and thank the great white father in heaven you want to find that done today people go thank the great white grocery store There is for those heathen that never heard, it will be a balance of their heart and God will weigh it out to what, he, what light he has given him. There will probably be Native Americans in heaven. Not New Jerusalem because they would be under a new, uh, 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 the world, or maybe not the world, the heavens, the new heavens. What light did you receive from God, the light that he gave you? And at what point did you reject the light given to you? Science you can blow. Science is everything but God. Look at accomplishments man has done. Look, look at, uh, you know, what, how, where we came from, our origin, and look what the things we can do. Do you think if they ever found a cure for Ebola, that's today's harsh disease, and it's harsh. I'm not putting down with the, the harshness of the disease. But you think if they were to come up with a cure, a shot, or a pill, whatever it is, and before you got Ebola, or even when you got Ebola, you can conquer that disease, you think they would give God the glory? The man, uh, you need to look up his name, I believe it's the, the man, that, the anesthesia. You know where he got the idea to study anesthesia? When he read there back in Genesis chapter 2 when God put Adam to sleep to take the rib from him. He read that. He says, you know what? He says, God got to be something that God can show us that man could have surgery and not be in pain. You know, there's two things if you're going to have surgery, especially in the Civil War. One of them is to bite a, 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 a uh, big stick. Number two, you, you drank alcohol, straight, pure whiskey. So you got so drunk and put out. Maybe that guy said, you know what, I don't want to drink whiskey. I don't want to drink booze. My body is clean. Maybe God will give us a substitute for that. You know, there are people who use whiskey and alcohol because their, their teeth are so painful. Yet God's given us Novocaine. He's given us... And some people it don't work for them, but I'm saying it's for some people. You know, there are products you can go to the store and buy. There's clover oil for your teeth. It's your heart of what you do to God. 
what light you have. Listen, you can have somebody who is born again Christian in a foul church. There are more foul churches than anything. The national symbol should be a, a chicken with his head cut off. That guy could be in a foul, non-King James Bible-believing church and love the Lord and, and doing what God has spoken to him outside that entire church is doing. And relying on God to say, you know, it's right or wrong. And you're not going to get it from the pastor. You're not going to get it when the soul's there. And what do you think God's going to do? The judgment seat of Christ. Because you weren't in the right church. Because, you know, no. That guy will get a well done probably more than somebody who's in a Bible-believing church. Who has a Bible. Who has a proper pastor. And doesn't do as much as that guy did. It's the light that you have received from God as far as much light as God. Listen, when, when, you, when God gives you light, and you say, aha, yes, I believe it. God turns the light bulb even more. Aha, yes. God will keep turning the light on until you, until you one day say, I reject it. You know, you're going wrong and you're reading Jeremiah. And as you cut a tree out of the forest and, and you deck it with silver and gold and you nail it so it's out of place and, and you get the revelation God says, what, what's that sound like? And you look up and you see that tree in your house. And you look at that passage and you look at that tree and you look at that passage and you say, Lord, I'm going to keep that because of tradition, because of my children and because of my family. And God says, that's it. Lights off. You look at that, and you read that, and you look at that, and you look at that, and you say, Honey, yes, dear, take everything off that tree right now. It's going out in the garbage can. And everybody in the neighborhood say, well, it, 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 It's December 2nd. Why has he got his tree out there in the garbage can? <laughs> Dude, what, what, what happened to your tree? You need another one? No, I don't need another one. The tree's out there in the garbage. What's it out there? Because I choose to serve the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Bible says I am not to follow this even practice. Oh, you religious hypocrite. I don't care what you call me. I'm a Bible-believing Christian. And God says, give him more light. He'll call five angels over. Give him more light. And then, on the other hand, it is first. You can go knocking on doors. You can go preach on the street corner. You can hold a sign for Jesus. You can pass out gospel tracts. Well, my mom made me do it. How much credit are you going to think you're going to get out of that when God ponders the heart? You know, if I, if I do this, the brother over there, he, he, gets, he gets 14, so I'm going to go for 18. I'm going to try to beat him. What are you going to get out of that one? I want the whole world to look at me, everybody! What about that one? There's a lot in verse 2, and we see, this is the second time we've seen it. Now, when you got a heart condition, you need to, you need to examine Jeremiah 17, 9. Your heart is filthy. Even after you're saved and washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are thoughts when I get upset, it's like, wow. And I'm, I'm to the point in my life right now as a grown Christian. It doesn't surprise me, but it just reminds me. It knocks on my door and says, yes, you're still fleshy. Yes, that I believe it's Ephesians or Galatians. You have a war with the flesh and you have war with the spirit. Welcome to Christendom, I guess they call it. You know how you know when you're a true Christian? You're in church and the flesh is saying, I wish you'd shut up. 
I wish we get this over with. And, and you're like talking to the Lord. Lord, will you just take that piece of flesh and bury him? You tell that flesh to shut up for me. I want to hear this message. I want to hear his. I want to for you. And the flesh is. And the spirit is like, shut up. <laughs> Go back in your tomb. We're enjoying this. You know? And then when you're in a grocery store and and the music's playing over the thing and your flesh is singing doo -doo -doo -doo, and it's singing to the song and the Holy Spirit's like, uh, excuse me. <laughs> the spirit speaking here, that that flesh is acting up again, is entertaining himself. What? What what am I doing? You know, God sends the light down to your you're singing that music that you used to sing. You shouldn't be singing. Oh, Lord, I'm sorry. I didn't think it was credential that all during the time that they were doing the construction that there was no music piped. And the first, and they, the music's now being piped. And the first song I heard last night, Satan was serenading me, was I write the song. You heard that one? That song is about Lucifer. To do justice and judgment. First Samuel fifteen twenty two. I, I gotta apologize again, my eyes are blurry. Fifteen twenty two, I believe that's what it says. It is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Lord, I have given you one million sheep because you've given me ten million sheep. I'm going to throw an extra hundred. Here's all my bullets. Here's all the first first ripe fruits of my harvest, including my wife's little uh, vegetable garden here. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Now we're going to talk about we're going to talk about giving and all that as soon as I'll use this as an illustration. What about that? What about that guy that wanted money down at the street corner the other day? I didn't even give him my money. Really? Wouldn't it be justice to help him out? Would it be great judgment to see if you know he had a need, truly had a need? I don't care about the million sheep. What was that widow woman that's in your church? Just barely making it. How about her? Well, Lord, here's all my sheep. Let's bring it up more today. We're talking about the church. Lord, I cash in my CD and, and here is my 10% to the nearest penny. Yep, I did it on the calculator. I didn't shortchange you. Where were you Thursday night? Lord, worked all day long. Yeah, and everybody like everybody in that church, I, I I put that preacher there for you. If everybody thought like you on a Thursday night, that guy would not be there. I mean, excuse me, you you people would not be there, and that guy would be at the pulpit preaching to nobody. If everyone thought like you, I've given you a good job. I've given you good money. I've given you a family. And what what can you give me? I I, I don't want I don't want it. See, you can give to the Lord, but is it bribery? Are you bribing God so that you don't you can pass up on justice and judgment? We're talking we're not talking about judge not least you be judged. We're talking about that you may have an opportunity by God to do justice to somebody or judgment. And you pass it up. And if this verse is right. Judgment 
Justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. You may be found wanting. Even if you did give 10% your entire life. If you passed up other things that God is, God may have brought this stuff as your calling. So it shows that we are to, who read the Bible and who study the Bible, is written to Bible believers because worldly people and religious are not going to read these. So Jesus is speaking through the Holy Spirit, through God. God is Jesus, and Jesus is God, using Psalm and the pen this word to say, we are to do justice and judgment in our lives and for others. Paul says we are to judge ourselves. What's that mean? I've sinned. I'm not supposed to be doing that. I am to put it under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, get it just, and seek God not to do it again. Judgment. When your child does wrong, there is justice to be had. You accidentally dent someone's car somehow, some way. Your judgment and justice is to leave a note on that car if no one's around. And not to say, because people are watching me, I am writing this note to you. No, you're to write down, this is my name, this is my address, this is my phone number. And maybe even your responsibility to call the police yourself so that there can be a report. By the way, you didn't show up. Just to let you know, at this this police department, there is a report filed. If you don't want to deal with me, and they have all my information, insurance, and stuff like that. God expects a. What is the will of God? Well, here's one: justice and judgment. And I can't get into all the way. It's you. It's others. It's your family. It's. It's all around you. And high look, you know, that, that I'm better than thou. I am holier than thou. I am higher than thou. Thou scum down there. Listen, you want the illustration of that? The Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes. Jesus sits with sinners and publicans. Ew. I gotta go wash my hands. I'm not talking about the tradition. Even the, even the disciples. You letting that woman? Do you know about that woman? <laughs> if you only knew what I knew about it. That's the high look. You're better than somebody else. And you know what, you know what, sorry, I, I could probably say this with 99% pure like ivory soul. That person you're down looking upon may be just as better in the eyes of God than you are. Because look what happens next. A proud heart. A high look and a proud heart. That high look is pride. And I'm going to show you, every time you, you hear me say pride, pride is never, God, is never of God. And the plowing of the wicked. Now that's an interesting word, the plowing. Did you know your life is a plow? You know you break up ground in your life? And you sow the seeds of what you do here, wicked. And you will have a harvest. Is sin. I am better than now. You know, the, the look. You don't have to say it. It's just, you know, those. The proud heart. 
and the plowing of the wicked is sin. So to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. The thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenty plenty of sniffs. Mouthful of a word. His thoughts are going to be to bring in more righteousness. You know, he may have a bad thought. He may have a wicked thought. He says, no, can't do that. That is wrong. That I can do. Let me check that one out with the Bible. See what the Bible says about that thought, if I should do it or not. And to that come plainness. God will reward him with great. And that's not always necessary upon this earth. It may be at the judgment seat of Christ. May the, may the grace and glory and mercy of God. You do get some of the benefits here on this planet. But. There's a but. Of everyone that is hasty. Hasty is complete opposite of diligence. So that he is hasty to run with his feet to evil. What's that mean? It means he's not diligent. What's it mean when it says he's diligent? He's not hasty. I want I want to put my money in a CD. Run down the bank here. Put it in a CD. Boing. Oh, how many? I uh, see one year. Okay, one year. That sounds good. One year. And diligent walks down the bank. He says, "Well, wait a minute. If I put it in one year." What if I need it? Will this get the greatest return that I need to do? You see what I mean? You got to think about. Don't be too quick. You know, I, you know the thing is, maybe I got to learn too, especially down here in Florida, what I've seen this morning coming home six times. I need to be diligent at a red light when it turns green. And you say, what do you mean by that? I can't be too hasty to put that gas pedal on. I now have to look both ways. That's gonna be that's gonna be hard training. You know, there's about six lights from my job to home, and I said six times this morning. And maybe more lights, but I, I think it was about six times this morning. And you say, well, what's that have to do with the verse? Well, I get plentiness of life, enjoyment of my car. And if I too hasty, I'm going to want a car. I want to go to court to sue the guy that hit me. I don't want that one. It leaves you without, I guess would be the illustration. The getting of treasures by a lying tongue let's see I've got I believe first Kings twenty one and second Timothy six ten. I believe that's a note for that one. How many people were put into office this week by a lying tongue? Vote for me, I'll fill in the blank. All right, when it comes to election time, did he do what he said he would do? And then how many morons put him back in office by saying something that he wasn't going to do that he didn't do the first time? You know how you can tell if you do have a Christian politician? Everything he says in writing, he puts on his signs, Lord willing. He puts in his, his statements, Lord willing. That's what the Bible says.
is vanity toss to and fro. And, uh, I'm, I hate to go out into the commentaries in this one, but I'm, I'm this one. You, you think about one of those those, those little dead bushes that are in the desert, tumbleweed. It just goes with the flow with the wind. It has no purpose. It has no value. Vanity is tossed to and fro of them that seek death. Now, of them to seek death, I read the. I don't understand what that means. I'm not even going to try to. I had something I'm trying. I'm not going because I don't understand. I can explain the first part of that, but of them that seek death, I I don't know. And if you read the verse over and over, maybe be simple. Maybe I don't understand. The robbery of the wicked shall destroy them. Now, the robbery of the wicked. I mean, is the wicked being robbed? No. And there's a wicked person in the Bible proclaims their their sin, their wickedness, and it's the robbery. It will destroy them. You wouldn't think so in America with the prison system. But back in these times, and back in early America. So you have to put it on your application if you've been arrested. But today, I think they have you put it on there so they can give you the they give give you the credit and give you the job. But way back when, is if you stole something, your credibility, your character was gone. I ain't gonna hire you if you can steal that. What are you going to do to me? It's called no trust. And when you have a character you can't be trusted in a proper civilian in a proper uh, climate, you're going to starve to death. What was the original sin? They disobeyed, they disobeyed God. How did they disobey God? They stole something from God that they weren't supposed to take. You ever think about it like that? And then look at where we are today because of stealing something. You want to talk about the robbery of the wicked shall destroy them. You want to talk about destruction. The wages of sin is death. Why did that tsunami, why did that tornado, why did that hurricane, why did that snowfall, why did the ground open up, why did the sinkhole, why did, why did, why did, God, 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 absolutely not. The destruction was used by God, or may have been because the wages of sin is death. Your human race caused its own problem. People in China are wearing gas masks and dust masks, not because of God, but because they want to drive around in automobiles and smoke up the place and have factories burning and burning all day long. The smog in L.A. is not because of God. It's because of man and his inventions and his progress. That's why. If man would have stuck to walking or, or horseback, the only pollution he would have was what fell on the road, and you could throw that into, into your field and grow better plants. And you would have somebody laboring with the job to clean up after the vehicle admissions program. There was a time in this world that a vehicle emissions program involved a shovel and a bucket and it, it produced more green plants. 
called manure. So, because they refuse to do judgment. What, what do you mean by that? They won't stop robbing. They won't stop being wicked. And they won't do judgment. Remember it says to do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Gee, what I'm doing is upsetting God. I need to stop. Now think about this robber here. He goes out and he steals ten pearls. Let's just say ten pearls. Pearl necklaces. All right. And we bring, we bring it back to to do just, justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Lord, I'm a robber, all right? Here's one pearl necklace I got this week. Uh, what? I brought my sacrifice. That's my 10%. Think God's going to honor that? There is some money being tr brought into church houses today that God does not write down in the book on why and how that money got. If you're a Christian used car salesman and you sell a car for ten thousand dollars and that thing should have been sold, matter of fact, that thing you should have paid the person to take it off your hands, and you bring three thousand dollars more than the tithe of that car, you think God's going to say, oh, right, "Write that down in the book"? Where the judgment and justice were back to that again is that car should not have been sold unless it was fixed up. You know, see all these verses, they, they collide into each other. The way of a man, we already looked at the way of a man. Every way of man, verse 2. The way of man, the way of man is forward and strange. How do you like that? You get on your Nina's, Santa Maria, and the Pinto, and you go start sailing off. You get on a ship with Magellan, and you start sailing off. You get on a ship with Hudson, you start sailing off. And you go to an area you've never been before, and you come across these people you've never seen before. And you know what? Their ways are forward and strange. You'll go no matter where you are. Here is a, a group of people. They worship a wooden pole. They worship, they worship rocks. They eat other humans. <laughs> they have not been brought the gospel. So when man does not have the gospel and does not have the word of God, he fights his fellow man. He eats his fellow man. He involves in erotical sexual music and, and all kinds of weird things. Listen, the Native Americans were just as bad as the Africans and deepest darkest of Africa in their worship. All over the world. The Aztecs, while well, all the civilization of, of the Christians and Bible and, and all the Old Testament going on. The pages of Bible were, were being written and being read and being studied and being prophesied. There are people down in Aztecs, they take a young woman, put her down the altar and slay her for her sacrifice. going on but as for the pure his work is right and the only way you can be pure is in the eyes of God is if you obey the commandment that God's given you for your period of time today would be you are washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and if you are truly saved and you are truly in the Bible. And you are truly in a church that God has ordained. His work is right. 
What do you do when, when you got somebody who proclaims to be saved and has no word? He's not pure. His way is forward and strange. The Jew in the Old Testament told to go three times to Jerusalem, the men. What if you didn't go? You, you weren't pure, and your work wasn't right, and you were forward and strange. How did God describe to the Holy Spirit in the Bible about Solomon's sin, where he, God told him in the law the king was not to multiply wives? He married strange women. What is a word that keeps getting quoted over and over in Proverbs by Solomon? Forward. The ability not to yield to God or what is right. Solomon did that, uh, Solomon did that three times. He multiplied gold. He sent people back to Egypt for the horses. And he multiplied what? He did not yield to what God told him to do. How long has Solomon read Proverbs later in his life? After he got married. After all the I do's, I do's 1,000 times. It is better to dwell in a corner of a housetop. Up on a housetop. This is why most men will not be home. Back then they had they had the, they had on top of the Peter was on top of the house when, when he went into the train. When the spies came into Jericho, she put them up in the house top. Had some kind of ports, whatever. We don't have that today. We have a roof. Then with a brawling wine, what woman, doesn't even say wife, this says a woman. It may be your in-law, it may be your daughter, it may be an aunt. It says with a brawling woman in a wide house. You can have a mansion, if that brawling woman's there, ooh, I'm getting out of here. It's lodge night, it, that was lodge night last three nights, yeah, we're having special meetings this week. What time is she leaving? <laughs> That's a Bible truth. Don't you get after me. And you happen to be a woman, and whether your status is in that house, and you're brawling, you are causing contention, and you are causing difficulty in the house that you're in. That's what the Bible says. The soul of the wicked desires evil. The soul. The eternal part. What was the what was the rich man thinking about when he was in hell with his soul? Me, 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 me. Give me a drink of water. Think about my family. Show me mercy. I am in torment. I'm being torment. It's all about me, 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 me. His neighbor findeth no favor in his eyes. You're displeased by your neighbors. Your neighbor doesn't like you. Because you're always plotting. You're always seeking to do injustice. You're always seeking to do foul judgment. Verse 3. When the scorner is punished. I have 21.4. The high look. I don't know why I have 21.4. When the scorner is punished, the simple is made wise. Ooh. Better not do that. You would have had a time in American schools where if a, if a child done wrong, they would put him in a corner with a dunce hat. That's long before my time. I assume when you seen that kid sitting there and humiliated, <laughs> I don't want to sit in that corner. 
I read Tom Sawyer. I read it often. You know what? You know what? You know what? One of the things was that that if you were a bad boy, you had to do and the whole. You know, you were talking to all. You had to go sit with a girl. You didn't want to do that. And there, there, there are signs that Tom Sawyer. You know, uh, if I do that, I'll have to go sit with a girl. At one time, he wanted to do it because he wanted to sit with a Pacific girl, but. And also in the book, there was, you know, when you did something wrong, the teacher, you know, grabbed the switch and did it right on your hiney in front of all the other kids. The simple will look at that and say, oh, I better not do that. Isn't that interesting? When the scorner is punished, the simple is made wise. You know, the guy that makes fun of you on the street, if a cop would come up and, and punish him right there, there'd be a lot more people would listen to us. Remember the scorner and the simple and the fool from chapter 1? How they keep showing up? You know, if we punish the people who make fun of Bible preaching and Bible preachers, maybe the simple would adhere to what the word is being spoken. And when the wise is instructed, he receiveth knowledge. When, when the wise sit in a congregation of a proper preacher under the King James Bible, we are instructed. And I think we're going to stop there. One at a time. Thanks.